kids across the city, it should be put on hold. More needs to be done because it's a huge task here. Government's efforts towards education for all. Whether these schools are providing quality education or not. And inadequacy of the RTE. Well, you know, if uh, there, are, there can be different ways of defining quality or of measuring quality, if we measure quality of education by the rel admittedly narrow measure of learning achievement levels of children, uh, because that happens to be a measure that's available to us, that's why we use it, not because we believe that that's the comprehensive or good measure of quality of education. Nevertheless, it's available. If we use that as the measure of quality of education, uh, the evidence that is available for India suggests that uh, uh, children who are attending private schools have higher achievement than those who attend government schools. But we also know that they come from better home backgrounds. But that's why there are several studies that look at uh, what is the relative effectiveness of private schools and public schools after controlling for the fact that children from these homes come from better backgrounds, those who attend private schools. And these studies find that there are about six or seven of such studies, some based on national data, some based on state data. Basically what they tell us is that um, after taking into account the more privileged, the, the more advantaged home backgrounds of children who come from, uh, children who attend private school, uh, there is, the, the, the private school achievement advantage falls, but it is not eliminated. In other words, there is still, uh, private schools still appear to be more effective than government schools, even after controlling for home background of pupils. So uh, by this narrow measure at least, it seems that uh, uh, private schools are more effective in imparting learning. Uh, that's what the evidence suggests. Well, you know, instead of giving you what my opinion is, I'd, I'd rather say what the evidence suggests. So if you look at, for example, the international evidence on this topic, you find, <coughs> excuse me, um, you find that um, uh, the work of Eric Hanushek, for instance, he does meta-analyses, which means he looks at uh, many, many studies that uh, look at this issue of the relationship between teacher uh, qualifications and student achievement or teacher salary and student achievement. And the, he summarizes the findings from these studies, these different individual many, many studies. He synthesizes the findings in what is known as a meta-analysis. And when you look at those studies, when you look at this evidence, he, his, his paper, for example, in the Economic Journal in 2003, shows that um, uh, where he summarizes the findings from 397 such estimates of the education production function. <coughs> and he finds that um, a very small proportion of studies show that there is a positive or beneficial effect from having, uh, from being taught by a more qualified teacher. Um, similarly, for teacher salary, the relationship between teacher salary and student achievement appears to be very inconsistent. There is no convincing evidence that there is such a relationship. Now, that's the international evidence. For India, there are some studies as well. They also do not show a consistent positive relationship. Some studies find a relationship, some studies do not, between teacher qualifications and student achievement and between teacher salary and student achievement. So the question is, um, you know, what, what do we make of this evidence? I don't think it means that teacher qualifications cannot matter to student achievement, but probably what it's suggesting is that it's the quality of that teacher's education that matters. And we do not have good measures of quality of education. We know from international evidence that teacher quality varies a great deal. Uh, you know, there are some very effective teachers and there are some less effective teachers. But when you then try to relate that measure of teacher quality with teachers' certification characteristics, such as their qualifications or training, you find that there is no, or, or their experience, there is a very little relationship between those teachers' resume or CV characteristics, uh, their certification characteristics on the one hand, and uh, their effectiveness as teachers on the other. Uh, the other thing, of course, I might add is about teacher salaries. Um, teacher salaries, we know in India, are much higher for uh, uh, government school teachers than they are for private school teachers. Nevertheless, we see that uh, students' learning achievement levels in uh, government schools are lower, even after taking into account the more uh, the, the less privileged backgrounds that they come from. So. 
uh, in terms of cost effectiveness, there is definitely uh, a big issue. It may be that there is not that much difference, that there is a modest uh, achievement advantage of private schools over government schools. But when it comes to cost differences, they are huge because teacher salaries in private schools in India are a small fraction of the uh, teacher salaries in government schools. Uh, to give you an, uh, to actually tell you some evidence on it, uh, if you look at um, uh, let's look at some uh, data, national data. Uh, in fact, let me go back further. The national data has only become available in the year 2005 and onwards on teacher salaries because there was a survey that was done. That was a national survey. But if we look at data from before then, from the 1990s, in my own survey in urban Uttar Pradesh and then in, in surveys that were run in Baroda district of Gujarat and in um, Delhi and in Tamil Nadu, evidence from these three or four studies shows that private schools teacher salaries um, were about between 40 to 45 percent of government school teacher salaries. In other words, less than half mm -hmm. during the 1990s. Private school teachers were paid about less than half of what government school teachers were paid. In the year 2002, there was a paper on Uttar Pradesh, uh, two districts of Uttar Pradesh, which is published in the Economic and Political Weekly by Singh and Sridhar. And in that, they find that the ratio of teacher salaries is um, uh, one is to five. That is, private school teacher salaries are only 20% rather than 40% is what they had been in, in the 1990s. So in other words, whereas the market clearing wage, the, the, what private school uh, employers pay to the teachers is what you might call the market clearing wage. The wage that this individual would get if they didn't work in a private school, but a p person with that level of qualifications, etc., if they were to go out into the open market and get a job, that would be the wage that they would get. And that is the wage that the private schoolers pay. And that's based on things like local unemployment rates and so on. And we know that local unemployment rates among graduates are high. Mm -hmm. For example, in India, according to the National Sample Survey data, um, uh, there is uh, unemployment rate among graduates in India is about 10.5%. Uh, so well above 10%. So there are quite a large number of educated persons available and who are unemployed and who, would, who are presumably willing to take jobs at low pay. So that's why private schools are able to take advantage of the low market wage that prevails and the fact that there is unemployment among graduates. Whereas uh, teacher salaries in the government sector are bureaucratically set. Uh, they are governed by things like the Sixth Pay Commission and uh, which centrally determine salaries which the states then adapt and apply to their, to their own individual states. Um, so those salaries have quite a lot of rents in them. That means non-productivity related salaries. And they are the same for all teachers across the board, um, irrespective of whether a teacher is uh, competent or not, irrespective of whether the teacher is performing well or not, irrespective of whether the teacher's own um, cognitive skills are good and uh, adequate for teaching children effectively or not, irrespective of whether uh, the teacher is um, uh, uh, dedicated and comes to school regularly or is chronically absentee. So performance, uh, arguably the private sector schools have some more leeway uh, to reward teachers based on effort rather than having a blanket salary structure for all teachers based on seniority and qualifications only. Well, if we believe the evidence internationally and which is also mirrored in the few Indian studies that exist, then uh, <coughs> it seems that the approach in the RTE is to ensure uh, that there are adequate it is to ensure the adequacy of inputs that are available in schools adequate number of teachers adequate uh, adequately trained teachers teachers with the relevant levels of qualifications and so forth but we know that the international literature and again the inter, uh, the sparse indian literature suggests that there is no consistent relationship between ensuring the adequacy of these inputs and learning outcomes so i think that it is uh, really um, it's unfortunate that the RTE Act does not focus on uh, uh, some of the, uh, on ensuring that outputs are good, on ensuring that outcomes for children are good. It seeks to ensure that the inputs are adequate and inputs are good. And I think that that's, a, um, that's an inadequacy of the RTE Act. It seems to me that the genesis of this idea 
of reimbursing only the uh, recurrent expenditures rather than the capital expenditures comes from the fact that um, in Delhi, uh, the uh, government has given quite a few private schools land at subsidized rates. And therefore, there's a very legitimate expectation on the part of the government that since public money has been, um, uh, you know, they have been subsidized, private schools have been subsidized to this extent, that they should also give something back to society in terms of educating poorer children at a subsidized rate. Um, but the point of then saying this blanket provision for the country as a whole, even uh, many, many, many private schools, we do not have data how many private schools or what proportion of private schools have got land from government at subsidized rates. To then say to all private schools uh, that we are only going to reimburse you your recurrent costs and not your capital costs, uh, that seems uh, a little, um, uh, little like a blanket prescription and not a very nuanced uh, uh, application of this rule. Of course, many private schools are run in rented buildings. That is the reality of the situation. However much we may want that not to be the case, the truth is that many of them are de facto run in rented buildings. In that case, there is no question of capital costs. There is a question only of recurrent costs. So those schools are not going to be disadvantaged by this policy of the government. So therefore, I think both ways, uh, this, this, this uh, rule will not bother some private schools, but it will uh, disadvantage those private schools that did not get land at subsidized rates and which do run in owned buildings where the land has had to be bought at commercial rates. So I think that it needs to be, uh, this rule needs to be more nuanced.